were they created by human beings? At that time in human history, our ancestors were still hunter-gatherers, struggling daily for survival. Their tools were primitive, and the wheel had not yet been invented. How were these thousands of stones transported, and what was their purpose? Until today, archaeology has no answer for this mystery. Well, since we have computer technology, and since we know how to fly, we might have an answer. Eric von Danigan reveals his theory that based on aerial reconnaissance, the builders of these alignments had a sophisticated understanding of geometry, triangulation, and the Pythagorean theorem. But these stones were arranged 4,000 years or more before the Greeks supposedly invented geometry. Eric von Danigan wonders who taught the megalithic builders their math lessons. He believes extraterrestrials came to Earth and encoded a message in the stones of Karnak. What is this message? Could these megaliths point to a place in the heavens where the builders live? We just don't know, yet. Well, what do you mean, yet? We know for sure that there is geometry. We have the pattern, we have Pythagorean triangles, but we don't know the message behind it. Maybe we have to wait until the extraterrestrials come back. <laughs> well, <laughs> you think they're gonna come back? They promised to come back. You know, what's 3,000 years in human history? Compared to outer space, it's nothing. They promised to come back, they will return. At the bottom of the world, in a land frozen in a perpetual ice age, Von Danigan believes there's more startling evidence that beings from another world left their mark on the ancients. In 1531, Orontus Phineas drew this map of Antarctica. But Antarctica supposedly wasn't discovered until about 250 years later in 1773. How could Orontus Phineas map a continent which didn't officially exist? There's a huge mystery here which scholars are not addressing, and it cannot be ascribed to coincidence. What is even more mysterious than Phineas knowing about a continent that hadn't been discovered is that Phineas appears to know what Antarctica looked like before it was covered with ice. And that was 125,000 years ago. How did he know the continent's shape before it was frozen under miles of ice? We've only known how the subglacial topography of Antarctica looks since the 1950s when seismic surveys were taken across the ice cap. We are left to consider profound questions, questions which force us to re-examine our ancient history. Eric von Danigan believes Arantus Phineas drew his map based on even older source maps created by extraterrestrials. Only visitors from the sky, Van Danigan maintains, have the sophisticated technology necessary to peer through the ice to chart the landmass below. We don't know, but this map could be evidence that our planet was once surveyed from the air by beings from another world. If extraterrestrials gave these maps to humanity, the question arises, what other kinds of advanced technology may have been handed down to us from sophisticated space travelers? Eric von Danigan believes these teachers from beyond may have taught the ancient Egyptians the secret of electricity thousands of years before it was discovered by modern man. This is the temple of Osiris in Abydos, in Central Egypt. One of the most mysterious gifts has come down from heaven to earth. It is the so-called jet pillar. It has been suggested that it could be a symbol of fertility or maybe a symbol of eternity, but also a symbol of power. What power? Do they maybe mean electricity? Eric believes the jet pillar could have been used as some kind of electrical insulator like you see at the top of modern power poles. But did the Egyptians have a way to generate electricity in the first place? 
According to Von Danigan, a strange metal-lined vessel was found not far from central Egypt. From the outside, this exact replica looks like an ordinary clay jar. But when Von Danigan pours in a common acidic liquid, like vinegar, this strange jar generates electricity like a battery. Now Von Danigan searches for the ways that the ancient Egyptians might have used this electricity. In the basement of the Temple of Dendera in southern Egypt, his investigation uncovers a possible answer. In this basement, there were different crypts. And in one of these crypts, we have fantastic reliefs on the wall. Look closely. Von Danigan sees something that may look like a cord which leads to a socket. Attached to the socket might be some kind of filament, and on the outside is a transparent bubble. Could this be an image of an ancient Egyptian light bulb? Van Danigan and his associates decided to test this hypothesis in the laboratory. We made a model of this electric bulb exactly in the same measurement. Would it work? Would it function? And it functioned. It works. If, as Eric von Danigan believes, extraterrestrials brought light to the temples and crypts of ancient Egypt, did a possible close encounter in South America cause some darker consequences. What you're about to see might disturb you. We are here in the Museum of Ica in Peru. This is one of the deformed skulls found in this area. Inca and pre-Inca tribes used the soft bones of their babies. They pressed it together with wood and leather. I ask myself, why have societies done this torture to their children? I think they adored someone. They copied someone. They wanted to be similar, like some of their teachers from above. Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Dating back a thousand years, Chichen Itza was an important civic center to the Mayan culture that flourished in the tropical lowlands of Mexico. The Maya were fascinated with astronomy. Their observatory still stands as a testimony to their yearning for knowledge. But did the Maya have help from someone or something who understood astronomy far better than they did? To examine this question, we explore the centerpiece of Chichen Itza, a one-of-a-kind building that tells the story of its own creation like no other structure in the world. This pyramid is called El Castillo. Uh -huh. It's dedicated to the god of Kukulkan, which was the, the feathered serpent. Kukulkan was one of the teachers to the Maya. He descended from the sky. According to Von Danigan, the legend continues that after Kukulkan descended to Earth, he taught the Maya in astronomy and mathematics. There are four stairs on each side on the pyramid, and every stair has 91 steps. You take 91 four times means 364, and the top one is 365, so we have one calendar here. Surprisingly, the Mayan calendar incorporated the movements of the sun and moon, and is as accurate as our own calendar today. How is it possible that the ancient Mayans possessed this knowledge at a time when Western man thought the Earth to be flat? Let's get up here. I have to show you something really fantastic up there. Come on. Well, you know, you can read the ancient signs, but these modern ones say it's very dangerous to walk up here. Look, traveling with me is always <laughs> dangerous. I know. I was just trying to not have to climb up 91 stairs. Here, follow me. Okay. It really is beautiful. 
Every year, on 21st of March, a chain of light and shadow, light and shadow, descends the stairway. Not on the whole stairway, just on the corner where God Kukul Khan is chiseled into stone. The Castillo is oriented in a special way, with each of its four corners facing the cardinal directions. When the sun rises during the spring equinox, the light strikes the steps at an angle. The spectacle this phenomenon creates draws thousands of people every year. On September 21st, the fall equinox, the shadow serpent rises again into the sky. Did they know that this light miracle was going to happen? Because of their astronomical knowledge, it was a question of calculation. But it, I mean, it was a question of calculation that couldn't be off a fraction of an inch. I mean, if you're going to build this this huge thing, you can't be wrong. You can't just move sure. it. No. You, you so are... they knew this before they were building it. Yes, absolutely. God Kukul Khan, he taught them in astronomy, in mathematics. They show how he descended the stairs from heaven to mankind, how he left mankind again with the promise to return. Are you telling us that the god Kukul Khan was an extraterrestrial? Yes. Kukul Khan was an extraterrestrial. The concept of gods descending to Earth is common in religions and cultures all around the world. But were these fictional gods of mythology or real visitors from another world? Ancient astronauts who came down to Earth long ago. Similar religious legends are found in the South American country of Bolivia. At an altitude of over 12,000 feet, descendants of the Inca pay homage to their Presterio, their patron saint. But over 1,500 years ago, at Tiwanaku, their ancestors celebrated their great god, Viracocha. Eric von Danigan believes Viracocha came down from the sky, bringing to his people knowledge of astronomy, mathematics, and agriculture. According to archaeologists, Tiwanaku was built in 500 AD, but others claim that it was built almost 15,000 years before that. At that time, no culture in the world could have constructed it. The mystery is, who built Tiwanaku? Von Danigan believes the answer may lie a few hundred yards away in the ruins of Pumapunku. I have reasons to believe that Pumapunku once was an Earth base of extraterrestrials. In Pumapunku, we have strange technology from another world. Stone building blocks are intricately cut with laser precision. They could have fit together like pieces of a puzzle, a sophisticated architectural achievement for a primitive culture. But Von Danigan suggests that there is more evidence that the builders of these two cities had help from teachers from the sky. This block has been etched with a perfect groove. Today, we would use a diamond tip saw to achieve this kind of accuracy, a technology only developed this century. Here lies yet another mystery few can explain. Whoever built Tiwanaku came up with a very ingenious method for holding together the huge stones which they used to build the site. They carved a groove in the edge, and into this groove they would pour a molten alloy, which later hardened into a staple. Eric von Danigan believes that extraterrestrials brought these sophisticated technologies down to the people of the region. The natives were awed by these strange visitors and worshipped them. Experts say Pumapunku was an ancient temple. But was it a place to worship gods of mythology or true living beings? And in here, a spiritual being, the god in spirit, lives in this temple. My idea is that Viracocha, but not only Viracocha, other so-called gods and other places in our world were extraterrestrials, and they were misunderstood as gods by our primitive ancestors.
they saw these beings uh, leaving the earth with fire and smoke, and so they believed they must be gods. Also, they were not gods. Well, have you ever seen a UFO? Oh, good point. <laughs> Sometimes I have the impression when Eric von Däniken shows up, they run away. Uh -huh. I never saw a UFO. It's a shame. Well, if you had seen one, what would you say to them? Well, first, I would be afraid. Then Why? Ah, <laughs> because it's strange, you know. We are not used to something like this. And then, naturally, I would try to make communication, however, uh -huh. by language or telepathy. And then I would ask some questions, a lot of questions. But the other way around, how would you react if you, of a sudden, would see a UFO? Uh, well, if it's in the distance, I w it would be fine. I'd go, wow, look, there's... <laughs> you know, but if they were confronting me, I mean, right there, I'd, I guess my first thought would be, why me? Though Eric and I have never seen a UFO or an extraterrestrial, the fact remains many people claim they have. In light of this phenomenon, advanced technology may help us communicate with extraterrestrials in ways our ancestors could not have imagined. Launched in the 1970s, the Pioneer satellite first explored Jupiter. After a close encounter with the largest planet in our solar system, Pioneer continued its journey into deep space. Fixed to the side of the tiny spacecraft is a gold disk. Etched on the disk are chemical symbols, a map of Earth's location in the solar system, and the figures of a man and a woman. The man has his hand raised in a friendly greeting to anyone or anything that might encounter Pioneer on its journey into the unknown. Remember El Astronado, the figure carved into a mountainside? It appears the ancient Nazcans were trying to communicate with extraterrestrials. 3,400 years later, we're still looking to the sky and wondering, is anybody out there? At the beginning of the program, I asked you to consider two provocative questions. Are we alone in the universe? And if not, have we ever been visited by beings from another planet? And for the past hour, we've explored the mysteries of the ancient world through the eyes of Eric Von Daniken. Did extraterrestrials visit the Earth imparting wisdom and technology to our ancestors? You're gonna have to decide that for yourself. But at the end of the 20th century, new technology allows us to examine our world and other worlds for signs that we might not be alone. Now our program ends here, but our search for clues, both on Earth and in the heavens, will continue. For Eric Von Danigan and anyone else out there who might be watching, I'm Richard Karn. Good night.